Hi everyone. Uh, today we're going to be looking at some of the new features which have been added in Cell Profiler 4. Uh, the interface in general looks relatively similar to Cell Profiler 3, but there are a few improvements that we've made in various places which we're going to show off here. I'm going to start by opening up an example pipeline from the new welcome screen. Um, and you'll see that the pipeline list looks relatively similar in normal uh, non-test mode. But if we activate test mode, uh, you should now see a new series of icons has been added to the left side of the display. Uh, this is used as an indicator of which particular module is going to run uh, the next time you click the step button. So you'll see this icon here, we're on the first module. If we click step, uh, we have now executed the first crop module and the second and the third. And now we work to identify primary. One of the useful things here is that these uh, grayed out icons can be used to hop back and re-execute any particular module that you want. So if we were to click the crop module, you can see we've executed that and we would now be about to start the identify primary objects module. We've also made some adjustments to the way that you handle the figures in the figure display. Uh, we've added a new option to the right click menu here to allow you to adjust the contrast of the images. So if we watch this um, particular plot here, we now have the ability to adjust the minimum and maximum display brightness like with other image viewers. And we can also change the normalization mode and any normalization factor that's relevant to that. We also have a button to apply this to other panels which share the same settings on that screen. Uh, another change to mention in the figure window is that we have moved the uh, measure tool from what used to be the tools menu here into this new dedicated icon here to measure the length of a particular object. When I click and I drag, I can now use the same tool here. And you'll see in the bottom right of the window, we currently get a length of the measurement, which appears right around there. We can again disable that like we would any of the other tools used for zooming and panning. Another thing to mention was that when we adjust the contrast, uh, this also persists until we refresh the figure. So we can zoom in and out without needing to redo that now. So another button that's been added to the um, main window is this View Workspace button here. This opens a tool which was previously in Cell Profile at all called the Workspace Viewer. Um, the Workspace Viewer is particularly useful because it allows you to build a customized view of your particular image set and data and detections. So if we add the red module, uh, red image, uh, green image, and blue image, uh, you can see we're effectively building a custom image up here. What did that one? What's wrong? There we go. Um, we do have options to change the intensity and uh, blending mode of each individual channel. Uh, but more importantly, this will allow us to display our segmentation and adjust the color of it if we so wish. One of the useful things about this is that we can zoom in, for example, on an area. And if I were to adjust my segmentation properties, Let's say we want a much bigger size gate. Uh, now, when I rerun that, you'll notice that this is automatically updated without changing the particular zoomed in area or any of the other figures. So again, if I were to change this back and maybe increase my threshold a bit and then execute that particular module, you can see again, the workspace viewer has updated. One of the other things we can do here is if we step forward a few modules and we run some measurements um, and hop back to the workspace viewer, we will now have the option to add individual measurements as a display. Uh, so I am going to show the, let's say area shape area. And you can see on this, we've currently got each individual uh, cell displaying its area statistic. Again, if I went back in earlier in my pipeline and I changed one of these settings, not 10, 1.0. And we just run a few modules again. Once we run the measure object size and shape again, you'll see that those numbers have now updated. There are also some new and changed modules in Cell Profiler 4. Uh, one module we've added is to allow you to combine different object sets, and that's called Combine Objects. If we wanted to add a module, we're going to go to the Add Modules window. And this comes to another small change that we've made here, uh, where you can now filter the list of modules uh, by name. So you see in the top of the Add Modules window, we have the Find Modules uh, box here. If I type into that, in this case, I want Combine. 
it's automatically filtered that down and added the combined objects to the top of the selection list. If I press enter, that will add the module. This can theoretically be used to add multiple modules at the same time as well. So if we did, if we wanted an identifier primary object, secondary objects, tertiary objects, I can move up and down with the arrow keys and use enter to do all of this with the keyboard rather than needing to use the mouse. The combined objects module is mainly designed for if you've identified your object in two individual stages. Uh, so let's say we ran two identified primary objects, one for small objects and one for large objects. Let's just set that up now. So we'll make that one with a small size gate and this one with a large size gate and give that one a second name. There we go. I'm just going to run those modules. Again, I can use these new icons here. And let's say we want to now combine nuclei one and nuclei two, and we can then choose different methods for handling uh, objects which would overlap. And you'll see when we do this, you've got object set one and two, and they've been combined into a object set here, which contains everything from both sets. So you see these particular two objects are present. Some of the other modules that we've added in this version are more applicable to 3D mode. So I'm going to open a volumetric pipeline here. Um, and one of the things to mention in this 3D mode is that we have also adjusted the uh, figure viewer for 3D pipelines. Some of you that use self-profiler 3 may remember we used to have a grid of 3x3 three three images showing various planes from the image. Uh, we now have a single plane view with the ability to change the plane using this slider at the top here. I can also use all of the contrast tools that we had available in the main window. So I may want to normalize, for example, and increase the brightness there. And you can see that is actually applied to all of the planes as well. Another thing that we've added here is a module called erode objects. There we go. And the road object is mainly useful if we have done, if we're planning to do, say, water shedding, and we've created some objects earlier in the pipeline. So I'm going to place it here, and we are going to use the results of the, let's say, the, probably the reset of the nuclei. Uh, I'm just going to hide these windows when run so we can only see the one we're interested in, and run the pipeline. There we go. So what we can do in erode objects is we can basically give it a per object uh, erosion filter, uh, which allows us to remove uh, pixels from the edge of each individual object. So if I were to use a size of five, this may be more obvious. You can see that all of these objects have been shrunk by five pixels. And we also have an uh, option to prevent objects from being entirely removed and preserve them as, say, a very small pixel there. Uh, or we can also relabel the resulting objects to give them new identities. Um, but the main way that this would be geared, the main purpose this would be geared for is using the watershed module. This is a more convenient way to generate seeds for a watershed based segmentation. Another feature we've added to the pipeline list here is we've revised the right click menu to give you a few more options for handling your pipeline. So if we were to look at this threshold module here, if we right click, we can see that we have selected the threshold module and we've got the options to delete, duplicate, disable, or provide help. And we've added a new option here called trace inputs and outputs. What this allows us to do is for this module, mark which other modules, you can see these icons here, uh, are producing something that's either needed by the module or used by the module, or produced by the module. So in this particular case, we can see that the input image for the threshold is rescale intensity mem, and that came from this second rescale intensity module here. And there it is. Indeed, the threshold module then put, puts out some threshold measurements which are needed by this image math module. This can be done with any of the modules on your pipeline. Some will use more than other, uh, more different things than others. So you can see that also later on in the pipeline, this save image module is using the uh, nuclei image that we generate earlier. 
This is primarily useful if you make an adjustment to a module's parameters and you'll then need to go through later in your pipeline and compensate for that. This makes it much easier to find the particular module that, um, modules that you need to change. Another small feature we have added is the ability to use the help menu to check for updates to Cell Profiler. Uh, this will let you know if there is a new update available and there's a more recent bug fixed version of Cell Profiler. Uh, that's all we have for now. Hope you enjoy Cell Profiler 4. Thank you for watching.